All right, picking up where we left off, we were looking at a baseball player, and that baseball player initially has kinetic energy, drops to the ground, is sliding into home base, and by the time it gets to home base, there is no more kinetic energy, and all that kinetic energy has been transferred to thermal energy. So if I look at our LOL graph again, Then I'm going to define my system as the baseball player, the ground, um, I think that's all I want to put in there. You can put in the earth if, if you want, but we're not looking at any gravitational potential. So the force applied from the earth to the baseball player is not going to affect the energy here. So remember, the things we're putting in the center are the, the objects that could apply forces onto one another to, to affect this energy, to make the motions, to create the potential energy or the thing that is moving. Okay. So in the beginning, I'm going to say that there is three bars of kinetic. Okay, remember that the bars are arbitrary, so I don't care how many you put. Okay? And then in the end, my beginning has to be equal to my end. So in the end, I have three bars of thermal. So that means that the kinetic energy before the slide should be equal to the thermal energy as he stops, when he's completely stopped. And so thermal energy, we said, did not get its own equation, but that we would find it similar to how we found the force of tension. So here in this question, if I were to be asked how much thermal energy there was at the end, I could use my equation for kinetic because those should be equal to each other based on conservation of energy. Now, the last one that we want to do is the one that I said was more similar to what you did with your energy state part. Um, I'm going to look instead at a roller coaster, but I want it to be a very similar idea. We're going to go from having kinetic to gravitational potential to kinetic to gravitational potential, just like it did in the energy state part. So I'm going to have this one start, and we have the first hill. And then we're going to go down to the second hill and then come up to like a, or down, sorry, and then come up to a second hill here, okay? So at the top of the first hill, I'm going to call that point A. At the bottom of the first hill, I'm going to call that point B. And then at the top of the second hill, I'm going to call that point C. And so then the roller coaster would keep on keeping on, but we really just care about these three spots for this example. B down here, I'm going to say point B is where Y is equal to zero. So this is our this is our ground point here. Again, I didn't quite get it to match up, but Y is equal to zero. Okay, and so then point A is going to be at a position of Y1 above the ground. And point C, I'm going to say that that's at a position of Y2 above the ground, where Y1 is greater than Y2. Okay. So A, I'm going to treat A like the first hill of any roller coaster. And if you know that's normally the tallest, and you go up to the very top, and you are sitting still for a moment before they let go. So up here at the top, I'm going to imagine that I'm sitting still. And if I'm sitting still, then I just have gravitational potential. I'm going to label it EG1 because I'm at Y1. So then I'm going to come down the first hill, go the, all the way down here to the bottom, where at point B, I'm at Y is equal to zero, but I'm moving. So I would have kinetic. And then I'm going to leave B, and I'm going to come back up here to point C, where I would move on and continue in the ride. So at C, I'm still moving, so I have EK. But I'm also at a position above the ground. So I also have EG, and I'm going to label it 2 because it's Y2. Okay? So if I look at these two kinetics, those would not be equal either. EK at B would be greater than EK at C because EK at C, I have some kinetic and I have gravitational. So my energy is being split between two different types, where at B, I only have EK. So I'm going to label this one EK1. 
this one EK2, and those are two different values. So to prevent this video from being another long video, I'm going to just make one LOL graph, and I'm going to do this LOL graph from point B to point C. Okay, so I'm going to shift over, give myself a little bit of room, because I'm just doing point B to point C. So L, O, L, okay. So I'm going to say that my system is the car, okay. Uh, car, cart, roller coaster, whatever you want to call the thing that's doing the moving along the track. And I'm just going to call it a car. So the car. And then I would have the earth because I'm looking at some gravitational potential energy. So there's a force between the car and the earth. Okay. Um, we're going to pretend that this track is frictionless. Okay. So I don't need to really add the track in because it's not applying a force that's going to affect our energy. But if you would like, you can put the track. That's fine. Okay. But really, the main guys are the car and the earth. Okay. So then at point B, it has kinetic energy. Stick with my classic three bars here, three blocks. Okay, so I would have E K one, and then at point C, I have E K and E G, and I don't know which one is bigger than the other. I really have no idea. So I'm going to just label it E K two as one, and then E K three, or uh, sorry, E G two as two. So that they would add up one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So then now if I set the left equal to the right, then E K one is equal to E K two plus E G two. And that would be my conservation of energy equation that I could use to start solving for things. So EK1 would be 1 half MV1 squared, or the velocity at point B. EK2 would be 1 half MV2 squared, or the velocity at point C, plus MGY2. And then I could use that to solve for mass or velocity or Y2, depending upon the question. Okay, so take all of these ideas and work on example set one. Let me know if you have any questions.